work is being followed up on and that the transfer uh, is appropriately handled. Did anyone at the FBI headquarters consult with Indianapolis and Los Angeles offices about notifying state and local authorities about the allegations against Nasser? I, I don't know the answer to that, but Inspector General Horowitz did the investigation, so I'll, I'll let him speak to the facts. Um, Senator, I'm not aware of uh, discussions about referring it to uh, state and local authorities. Uh, Director Ray, how far did knowledge of the Nasser invest, investigation extend within the FBI headquarters in 2015? I, I, my understanding of the most senior individual involved, based on looking at the, the thorough and independent investigation that Inspector General Horowitz conducted, was that the most senior uh, individual uh, with sort of knowledge and responsibility was the, the special agent in charge in Indianapolis, um, Mr. Abbott. But again, I, I would defer to Inspector General Horowitz on that. Was the director aware of the Nazar matter at any time in or before calendar year 2016? Uh, I, I, I don't know the answer to that, sir, but maybe Inspector General Horowitz does. Uh, prior to 2017, did the FBI headquarters follow up with its field offices about the status of the Nasser investigation and whether further, further federal investigation was needed. The, um, Senator, there was uh, in 2016 some dialogue about that, um, but um, a, as we describe in our report, the uh, FBI policies don't require um, the level of detail and reporting to the headquarters unit um, that would, for example, put the responsibility directly on them to have notified state and local authorities. Senator Leahy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad, Mr. Howard and, and, and Director Ray, that you're here, but the conclusions we have here are I suppose the nice way you could say is they're troubling. They're damning. They're horrible. Uh, and I think of the young women who testified here today, what they went through, and I, I don't see where they get much solace out of, out of listening to this and what do the American people feel. Um, uh, Senator Grassley just mentioned, uh, Mr. Howard said about Jay Abbott. Uh, named the IG report, he retired. Was that a forced retirement? It was not. Uh, did he ever face any possibility of prosecution? Um, we referred uh, our findings to the department's prosecutors for consideration about the false statements that he made to us in our interviews. By consideration, do you make a recommendation when you do that? We don't make a formal recommendation. As you know, as a former prosecutor, and I was a former prosecutor, there are informal discussions, but ultimately uh, the responsibility for the decision is with the prosecutors. And I, I will say, having written a report a couple of years ago um, about the prior FBI director's statements at a public press conference about what he would do as a, if he were the prosecutor, uh, you know, I was, I'm not about to, um, jump in and take someone else's responsibility. No, I, I understand that. And um, when I was a prosecutor, uh, law enforcement sent their investigations. I had to make the final decision, of course. But I think of the number of people who get charged for lying to FBI agents. I mean, we've seen such charges that brought in various areas, everything from organized crime on. I'm just... It is troubling to me to see that an FBI agent who lied, broke the law, knew he was breaking the law, and nothing happens. Um, I understand the I understand the procedures, but it, it bothers me greatly. Uh, the failures by the FBI field office in Indianapolis delayed the. Uh, starting investigation of Larry Nassar's widespread sexual assaults of over 100 victims and everybody, I don't care where they are on the political spectrum of the earth, 
had to be torn apart listening to the testimony of these victims this morning. I know I was. And the, uh, we talked about uh, Ms. Raison's uh, testimony. She didn't have a parent or lawyer present when she was being questioned. Uh, Director Ray, is that? You mentioned changes in procedures. I realize this happened before you were director, and I'm asking the changes in procedure. Today, would she have a parent or lawyer present with her? Well, that would be a, a discussion between um, the agents and her and her parents. Uh, one of the things that, um, uh, as I said, that we've changed is the is to step up the emphasis on these what we call CAFIs, CAFI, these child adolescent forensic interviewers. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to view these kinds of interviews as a very unique kind of interview. There's all sorts of sensitivities, and we heard a lot about it in a very uh, powerful way from from the women who testified here this morning. Uh, very, and the point you made about parents, et cetera, that, that's part of one of those many sensitivities. And so that's why it's so important to have interviews done uh, by or at least heavily involving these child adolescent forensic interviews. That's why we have that program. That's why the policy has been strengthened to increase the use of them and to require them. Um, that's why we've discouraged uh, in any, as much as possible telephonic interviews at all. Uh, in these kinds of cases. Um, and one of the other, I think, helpful points that uh, came out of Inspector General Horowitz's report is the, the clarification that that should also uh, take into account uh, women who are adults at the time of the interview but who were victimized when they were minors, and because that is its own kind of uh, unique sensitivity. So we're trying very hard to push out that program uh, to avoid the kind of uh, really heartbreaking insensitivity that, that you just alluded to. Well, the supervisory special agent in, in Indianapolis, uh, Michael Angelman, has now been fired. Uh, have there been recommendations? That, what, what took so long to fire him, I, I might ask? Well, uh, we waited for the report. Uh, you know, one of the things that I want to make sure is that we don't have a situation where two wrongs make a right. Um, and so uh, we waited until we had the Inspector General's independent report. We followed our disciplinary process, uh, and he's been fired. Did he contest the firing? I, I, I probably can't get into that discussion uh, here. Um, I, I want to be sensitive about Privacy Act concerns and so forth. Mr. Howard, if you could say, has there been a recommendation that he be prosecuted? Um, Again, uh, what would ha what happen in these discussions generally or interactions with the prosecutors, we don't make a, generally speaking, we don't make a formal recommendation to the prosecutors. Um, and I think you'd have to um, have the department's uh, officials speak to that issue. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just close with this. I, I mean, I look at a whole lot of people who should be prosecuted here. Uh, Besides, Nasser obviously should be a prosecutor, but I'm thinking of some of the people within the athletic field that were aware of this, who turned a blind eye to it, who did nothing to it, and allowed all these victims to be there. I'm not talking about people in government, but even people outside. There are a whole lot of people should be in prison. I'm glad he's in prison. But I, I can tell you, frankly, as a parent, as a grandparent, is a hell of a lot more I'd like to see in prison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Feinstein. Thanks very much, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, gentlemen, when this report was released, uh, that, and that's the IG report, sure. on July 14, the FBI publicly promised, quote, to take all necessary steps to ensure that the failure of the employees outlined in the report do not happen again. No, That's a direct quote and an important promise. Can you please describe the specific steps, specific steps the FBI has taken in the past two months to ensure that these failures do not happen again? Thank you, Senator Feinstein, for the question. So uh, first, 
uh, as has already been mentioned, the disciplinary process has already been completed uh, on the supervisory special agent, and he's been fired. Uh, second, we have strengthened policies, procedures, systems, and training to address uh, and incorporate all, underline all, of Inspector General Horowitz's recommendations. Uh, many of them are already complete now. Uh, so that includes, for example, on the issue of reporting to state and local law enforcement, which, by the way, should have happened here anyways, but to assure that it happens going forward, we now require that the agent uh, handling one of these cases has to document that he's reported it, so there's an audit trail and he's accountable that way, that he has to confirm it to his supervisor. Uh, and we've had additional mandatory training for everyone involved. Uh, we had two kinds of training already implemented, one for every single employee in the FBI, uh, and I've taken that training myself, uh, but also training specifically targeted at the uh, employees who handle these kinds of cases and their supervisors. So that's just on that one piece, but we have similar changes to the transfers to field offices and so forth. Mr. Chairman? Yes? I don't want to go into more specifics. I'm, I'm, I, I heard his commitment. I would like to see it in writing sent to this committee in the form of a letter following this hearing so that we have written evidence that the FBI is going to do certain things. I can certainly join you in preparing a letter to the FBI, which they can respond to in, with specifics in the director's signature, correct? Yes, sir. I, I very much would appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Horowitz, I am concerned that the FBI's failures in this case may be a symptom, may be a symptom of a broader failure to treat cases of child sexual abuse with the seriousness and sensitivity that they deserve. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one in four girls and one in 13 boys experience child sexual abuse during their childhood. Our law enforcement agencies really should ensure our children are protected. Um, have you seen other instances in which the FBI's failure to properly investigate a case led to ongoing sexual misconduct or harm to children that could have been prevented? Um, Senator, thank you. That I, I agree with you about the significance and importance of this. We, we didn't do a broader look at this, but I, I will say, speaking to your point, what concerned me particularly here, even though we didn't do a broad look at other cases, was we actually had two offices who dealt with this matter, the Indianapolis office and the LA office. The Indianapolis office had all of the basic fundamental failures that you've heard about and we've talked about, but the, and didn't tell state and local law enforcement. The LA field office actually did open a case an investigation, actually did interview witnesses, did do follow up with some of the gymnasts, and yet they also failed to report to state and local authorities. So you had an office that actually took this seriously, but didn't do what was also, I think, a fair, f fair to say, a fundamental step, particularly since they also had concerns about whether it was federal law enforcement, federal jurisdiction here, because as we all know, these are usually the province of state and local prosecutors and investigators. And again, going back to something Director Ray said, the FBI policies before this made it clear that in these kind of cases, state and local prosecutors, are uh, investigators, are force multipliers. And yet, it didn't occur in either office. And that was particularly concerning. Well, let me just for a moment engage you on that. Um, you said a, a number of things in your statement. It is really important. Can this be put in any form of policy which becomes operational procedure for the agency so that this committee and others know that things are going to change based on what has happened in the recent past? And, and the report makes clear, and what we've heard today makes clear, and 
Senator Blumenthal and Senator Moran's report. Absolutely. Clear. What Things I'm have talking to change. about it are your procedures, and, right. not what we say. No, right. And what, what has to happen is what Director Ray mentioned that they are doing already and what we all need to do, the FBI, the OIG, this committee, is do the follow-up you're talking about. We are going to continue to do our independent oversight of how those recommendations have been implemented, like we do in all our reports. We will follow up with that. I am happy to report back to the committee on what we've seen. But steps do have to be taken because there does have to be, and it sounds like the FBI has taken those steps, to ensure record keeping on the fact that something did occur. And that may sound obvious, and I know it could sound trivial at times, but one of the damning findings here is the lack of record keeping that was occurring in 2015 that was only documented or attempted to be documented in 2017 and then done falsely. Could I? I don't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. But I would really, after all of the emotion and all of what we now know, five years later, to see new practices go into place. And what I'm asking both of you is to do that and give us here and now some statement of your intent to do that and that they will be posted and people will be trained in them and that they will be held responsible to carry them out so that what we said here and spent the time here can really make the change that's necessary that no small child is going to be questioned by an FBI agent on the phone, you, you, you know, about this kind of thing. But the, what your practices are so that everybody knows. We always follow up on our recommendations. We will do that here. You have my commitment. We will report back to you what we found. And it will be up to the FBI to implement them. But we will not stop reviewing this matter until we're confident, we the OIG, me are confident that the steps were taken that needed to be taken and i would just add that that's exactly what's contemplated with the uh, incorporation of all of inspector general horowitz's recommendation policy changes additional safeguards in the process mandatory training that addresses this i, I can put all that in the letter that uh, you and the chairman discussed 